Hi everyone, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to our sponsored apiary which this year is being sponsored by Happy Valley Honey who've provided us with a range of their honey pour Langstroth poly hives for us to try out and uh, see how they work, see what they're like and just generally try the equipment out. If you want to take a look at the equipment online, have a look at Paul's website www.happyvalleyhoney.co.uk and I'll leave a link down in the description below. So today we're here just to carry out some regular inspections. We've taken the honey off and we're now having a look through just to do a weekly check. As we go into the autumn, those checks will become uh, fewer. Now's the time that we'll start to prepare the colonies for winter. We're going to look to treat them. We've got a range of treatments that we, we traditionally use. This year we're going to use a product called Apistan, uh, which is a pyrethroid treatment, and we'll have a look at um, treating this particular colony uh, in the next week or two. But for today we're just going to carry out a standard inspection. Uh, this is the colony where we uh, tried to requeen it and it looks as if there was already another queen in. Uh, please do take a look at some of the earlier videos to, to catch up on that one. Uh, but thank you everyone for your comments and suggestions. Uh, we've had a range of different uh, comments about what might or could have happened. Uh, we're going to try and mark this queen today, so if we spot her we'll, uh, we'll just put a red dot on her thorax. Uh, but generally it's, it's just going to be a, a quick inspection. You'll probably recall that this is one of the grumpier colonies that we've got here and uh, someone has suggested that we use a water spray to calm them down so we're going to give that a try today if they start to get a little bit too grumpy. We'll obviously carry on with our smoker as normal but if the bees do start to get a little bit agitated then we're going to give them a quick spray with some water, just plain water and see if that has any effect on them as well. It's another scorching day, uh, it looks as if today might be the final day of our heat wave here in the UK, it's currently hitting somewhere around 30 to 32 degrees centigrade so we're going to uh, make this a fairly rapid inspection because it's going to get quite hot and as we move towards the end of this week the temperature is going to drop back to more average temperatures in the low 20 degrees centigrade and so it's going to be a lot more comfortable for us as beekeepers inspecting so that's good news and hopefully the bees will be able to control the temperature within their colonies uh, likewise. So we'll get the smoker lit and head off into the apiary. So it's a 10 frame Langstroth which uh, I've mentioned before. Uh, this is one of their uh, standard roofs. Uh, hive number 58. And let's see what kind of mood they're in today. Hopefully chilled out because they've got a nice lane queen and their disease issues have gone away. So it looked as if they potentially had uh, some, maybe some brood disorders, sack brood, chalk brood. Uh, we tried to requeen them. There's been some suggestion that maybe it is the queen that I introduced because the queen that I introduced was a smaller, darker queen, but naturally, of course, when you introduce a queen in a queen cage, they are going to be slimmed down to a certain degree. But I had the feeling that the queen was a lot darker than the queen that we've seen in here, and I couldn't really see any uh, evidence of the red dot um, on her thorax. So that was what kind of gave me the, the headache of trying to work out what had happened. But they've certainly put in lots of stores now. So this is going to be here with them for the winter and going, going through into the new season. It seems a bit crazy to be talking about winter now, but um, it is time to prepare for winter. So <clears throat> Here's, oh, we've got there's a lot, an awful lot of wasps around this year, so that's been a, a real issue. But this um, raised drone brood area 
gives me a little bit of cause for concern. I wouldn't want to see uh, drone brood in, mixed in with worker brood. I'd rather see it in a separate clump because this could mean that the queen that we've got in here is actually misfiring. And it's the same on the other side. We've got this clump of odd drone brood in amongst the workers. So we, it's early in the inspection, but already I'm thinking potentially there could be another issue. The bees seem to be a lot calmer this time round. Uh, I might be tempting fate in saying that, but we'll carry on with the inspection. So again, we've got some worker brood here, lots of pollen, and this is likely to be the sugar syrup that we fed them initially to get them to pull the, the comb. Again, on this reverse side, we've got raised drone larvae capped in amongst worker, which is potentially an issue. Um, and those of you that um, follow all of my videos, both here on YouTube and on Patreon, will know that I'm regularly forgetting my glasses. And once again, I haven't put my glasses on, uh, but I can see that they've there are eggs in these cells here. So we have a laying queen, albeit potentially we may have a bit of an issue in the fact that we've got drone brood in amongst worker brood. But we will continue with the inspection. So I think what I'll do is get about halfway through the inspection and then I'm going to switch to the water mist if we need it rather than using the smoker and see what happens when we use that. Again lots of worker brood here, capped brood. We've got some open brood down this side here. Uh, the good news on this section is that there doesn't appear to be a great deal of drone brood. So this is more what I would expect to see, albeit just a small cluster, we've got drone brood in one section and not scattered in amongst the worker brood. So that uh, gives us perhaps a more optimistic view on what the Queen's doing. So now we'll switch to the water spray and see if that makes any difference to how the bees react to us. So this was suggested by a gent by the name of Phil Chandler, who also has a YouTube channel, so give him a look. So here's the queen, we've got the queen here. And so I can't see any sign of a red mark, even without my glasses, I can't see uh, any residual markings on her. So we're going to mark her. So I'll just lay the frame down gently, pop the spray bottle on the floor. I do at least have my marker pen with me. And so I'm just going to pick her up and place her on my finger, holding her by the wings and then I use my thumb just to trap her legs, whether we can see that on the camera, and then just mark her thorax with a red dot and then release her back down gently onto the comb. So now we definitely have a red dot on our queen there. And I, again, I know that people choose not to mark their queens, and I know that people clip their queen's wings. I don't particularly uh, clip wings, but I do like to mark them. Uh, it gives me a, a nice, easy visual representation of where my queen is. And if we happen to have a super seizure queen or something happens, they've swarmed, the next time I see a queen and she's not marked, then we know that something has changed. 
of course the bees will try to remove the paint while it's still wet but I think we're okay there it seems to have dried off fairly quickly we use a water-based paint so it doesn't do any harm to the queen but that does obviously mean that it can get licked off by the bees fairly quickly but she seems really calm and she's moving around quite nicely so we'll pop her back in and we've got plenty of eggs on both sides of this frame so we've got our water bottle Again, here we have a few drone cells, but nothing too much of a, a problem. And this side is nicely laid up with uh, plenty of worker brood. So maybe we've got away with it and we've actually got uh, a situation where the queen is now going to settle down. And we'll leave this queen in here now, hopefully through the autumn and into the winter, and come out the other side and we'll see what temperament the bees have. It could well be that this is the queen that uh, Paul Beardmore from Happy Valley Honey sent over to me. Take a look at the earlier videos to see, uh, see the problems that I've encountered. But the bees do seem to be calmer, so maybe the bees are actually changing their traits because we've got a different queen with different genetics. Maybe it's just because it's too hot, they really don't want to be bothered to race around trying to chase me away from the hive. They're still bringing in lots of nectar here to store away. And we're now into the real last remnants of any blackberries that are around. We've not taken any honey from this colony this year. We've uh, carried out the shook swarm and just left them to develop into the Langstroth. And this is a very heavy frame, so as you'd expect, it's full of stores. And they're filling up the inside face with stores as well. Great, so let's uh, close these up and we can call that a successful inspection. We've marked the queen and actually the bees have been quite calm. We've not used a great deal of either smoke or water to spray them to keep them calm um, but we'll uh, we'll try again with the water spray bottle so thanks Phil thank you very much for the suggestion I'm always open to uh, new suggestions and new ideas and I really appreciate all of the comments that uh, you all make in suggesting different ways that we can manage our bees I certainly don't pretend to be uh, a fount of all knowledge or an expert. I just enjoy my beekeeping and enjoy sharing what I do with everybody. And of course the beauty of beekeeping is that there are so many different ways of looking after your bees that you can choose to use different methods and different styles. So we'll get the cover board back on. Uh, the one thing I do still struggle with a little bit is using these clear cover boards because it does tend to cause the bees to crush a little bit. Well we do have a, a little gap on these Langstroths so there is almost a top bee space uh, on here but the bees have built up the, the comb to provide themselves with a, 
a, a proper B space. So we just try and the trouble is every time you lift the cover board to free one, you inevitably end up trapping more. I think we're okay there, so we can pop the roof back on. And Hive 58 can carry on its work for another week. So that was great. Uh, we managed to find the queen and finally get a red dot on her. Uh, questions still abound as to exactly what's gone on in that colony, but uh, it's evident that there's a lot less disease in there. So whatever brood problem we had has now been uh, rectified to a certain degree. There were one or two cells in there that looked as if they might have had a little bit of an issue, but I'm hoping that with the Varroa control that we're going to use in the next video that we'll be able to then uh, get that under control. Hopefully, whether the queen is Paul's queen or whether it's one that the colony have created, we've now got some new genetics in that colony and they're going to be a little calmer. Certainly today, whether it's the weather, whether it's using that water spray or exactly what it was, they were certainly a lot less uh, feisty than they have been in the past, so that's really good news. Uh, hopefully that will continue now and next spring we'll have a nice calm colony still. My thanks to everyone that's contributed with the comments and suggestions, I really appreciate it, please do keep them coming. Again my thanks to Paul at Happy Valley Honey for supplying all of the equipment here and don't forget that you can catch up with Paul on his website and I'll put the link down in the description below. And finally, don't forget to check out our Patreon page where you can sign up to access a whole raft of additional content. Again, I'll leave the information in the description below. Uh, we're gonna get out of the sun now and try and cool down and we'll catch up with you next time. Thanks for watching.